you doing? Good. Excited? Michael Jackson's album comes out tomorrow. Thrilled about that. I hope he doesn't hiccup during this album. Remember the last one he hiccuped during every song? He did, remember? Hey, pretty baby, with your high heels on. <laughs> you give me fever like I never, ever know. <laughs> Somebody used to go over to him and go, Michael, boo! <laughs> hey, shut up, man, you're scaring me. Stop it, I'm gonna become a panther and scare you. <laughs> show him all right, show him all right. <laughs> what is that about? I love Prince. You have the new Prince album? That is a hot album. I don't care who you are. You listen to the Prince album, you're horny. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You could be at a party. You don't even know people. It comes up. Dream. Get on. Hi, excuse me. Could you lay down, please? I have to do you right now. <laughs> oh, the Prince album's on. I didn't. What was your name? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Kareem. Get on. Kareem. I'm actually having sexual fantasies about Prince. Is that normal? It is? Sexual fantasies about Prince. That's like thinking about doing it with a Smurf. <laughs> is he even human? Does anyone know? He's cute, though, and then MTV Awards is little hiney. <laughs> Tina Turner's probably my favorite singer. But let's face the fact, Tina Turner has a foreign accent for no apparent reason. <laughs> Tina Turner's an American citizen. She's from Nutbush, Tennessee. She gets a Grammy Award. All of a sudden, she's from the British West Indies. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone. <laughs> For making my album, Private Dancer. Oh, that's a success at work. I'd like to thank you for coming. Well, thank you for voting me. Thank you for standing. Good night. Then she and her hair leave the stage. <laughs> if I ever get an award, I'm going to do that just to piss people off. I am. I'm going to go, I'd like to thank everyone for making it possible, really. I'm having a sucky time. Thank you so very much for the trophy and good night. <laughs> Shamori. 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 <laughs> Did you guys miss that? Shamori. She looks good, though, Tina Turner, doesn't she? She's really... What is she, 78 now? How old is she? <laughs> Everyone tries to look good. I just did the stupidest thing trying to look bad. I got my teeth crowned. Can you tell? Look. Can you tell? Don't ever get crowns. The dentist doesn't tell you what they have to do to your real teeth before they put the crowns in. So I'm sitting in the dental chair thinking, I'm gonna look like Chrissy Brinkley. I'm gonna look like Chrissy Brinkley. He's drilling and drilling. Blood is flying everywhere. I'm gonna look like Chrissy Brinkley. <laughs> Six hours later, he leaves the office to make the crowns. I'm a little curious at this point. I pick up the mirror. You know that little mirror that looks like you ripped it off the side of Barbie's country camper? I look. I am the howling, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a Kentucky hillbilly with no shoes. I have points. I have $8,000 worth of brown, ugly spikes in my mouth. Eight thousand dollars that's a car folks that's a car okay it's a hyundai with a crappy radio but it's a car nonetheless <laughs> so i'm a comic now it's a hard thing for me to believe that wasn't a job option when i was a kid when i was a kid who wanted to be a rock star kids today they actually want to be comics i have a brother he's four years old he wants to be a comedian very flattering but every time he sees me now he tries to tell me a joke have you ever had a four-year-old tell you a joke <laughs> takes about two hours has no semblance or order wanders aimlessly you have to know when it's over one day I went to school, I wanted to tell you that what on the monkey stuff called There's a big muscle, I went to him, one of the stuff called him all food thing. He's stupid muscle, if you chop your beef out, milk, maybe he milk could come over with something, he milk thing. By the power of great skull, I am the power. So you'll be scared, one day away from him, and one time, one time, one time, one time, one time, one time, there was one time, wait a second, wait a second, let me start over. You're very busy. You got this TV show. Yeah. Uh, what is that about? Who else is in it? It's on Fox. It starts in January. It's called uh, Stand By Your Man. It's with me and Melissa Gilbert. You know Melissa Gilbert? Yeah. Because when you think of comedy, you think of Little House on the Prairie, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but actually, she's all grown up. She's a mom. She's like 27 years old. And she's very, very funny. She looks like uh, one of the members of Married to the Mob in this. It's about two sisters who go to live together when their husbands go to prison. Because, you know, there's not enough comedies about prison on TV, Arsenio. <laughs> Such a funny topic. <laughs> we'll check it out. We'll check it out. The big thing that's happened to you is this movie. I, I, Penny Marshall, Madonna. Um, I guess they know about that, but if they don't, tell them. Yeah, I did a movie this summer called A League of Their Own. 
Uh, Penny Marshall directed it with Gina Davis and Madonna, Tom Hanks, Big Movie. Yeah. I had to meet them all. I had to meet... Penny Marshall was scary enough, you know? Because yeah. I'm sitting outside, she's in her office, I'm going, okay, don't say Laverne, don't say Laverne, don't say Laverne, don't say Laverne. <laughs> You know, I'm, so, I'm like really nervous. She walks in, she goes, hi, Rosie, I'm Penny, nice to meet you. Like an idiot, I go, hi, I'm Laverne. <laughs> then I go, schlemiel, schlemazel, hot and fat. You know, I thought I, she didn't think it was funny. <laughs> but it, it's about, it's a true story about uh, 1940s, 1942, 43, during the war, uh, the Wrigley Company formed a women's baseball league, Hartball Baseball, because mm -hmm. all the men were away at war. And these women played for uh, 10 years. And they've just been uh, indoctrinated, I'd like to buy a vowel, into the Hall of Fame, the Baseball <laughs> Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. And it's the true story about these women. And that's, we had to play baseball. Yeah. And all, no one really knew how to play baseball besides, but there are three women of the 20 who really had played before, you know? And at the audition, there were every actress under 30 years old in Hollywood was at these auditions. And it was hysterical because they all told their agents they could play. You know, like Teresa Russell. Do you know Teresa Russell? Yes. Yeah. She was there like in Nike spandex, you know, shorts with a matching sports bra. <laughs> and um, she was like, you know, I totally know how to play baseball. I'm like, Teresa, sweetheart, you might want to hold the thin end of the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Go out there. Okay. <laughs> but they all, everyone learned how to play. Madonna as well. Had to meet Madonna, which was scary. You all hit it off, though. We did hit it off, but not right away. Because, you know, what do you say to Madonna? I don't care who you are. You meet Madonna, you're a dork. You're a total dork. What could I possibly say? Hi, I have a vibrator. What could I say to her? I mean, how do you bond with that? Well, you know, we have a very similar life, you know, really, we do. Because, you know, my mom died when I was a young girl, as her mom did. We're both the oldest uh, girls in a big uh, a Catholic family. So we had a lot of similarities, how we grew up, and we sort of became friends. And it was weird, too, because it's like being friends with Elvis. You know, she's, like, so famous, you know. Yeah. And you have preconceived notions, like, you know, she's married to Sean Penn. You watch Sean Penn beating everybody up. You think he's an idiot, right? Right. Well, then I go to the movies with Madonna. She's like five foot one. She's 90 pounds. Everybody's after her. I'm like a pit bull. I'm like, get away from her! Back off! You back off! You back off right now! You know? And the thing is, I'm not even sleeping with her. You know what I mean? I mean it's hard. But she's nice, and she's uh, doing a lot. She's in New York now, working on some music, I think. Yeah. Um, somebody who works with you told me you met Dolly Parton, but she's not in this movie, right? Who told you that? I don't... Oh, God, it's the most embarrassing day of my life. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who Thank told you that? They're fired, whoever did it. Whoever did it, you're fired in the green room. <laughs> all right, here's what... We were doing this movie in Chicago with, you know, all these big stars, and Dolly Parton was doing another movie. She was at our hotel. So I knew she was at our hotel, so I'm, like, kind of looking for her, you know, like a total dork that I am. Like, where's Dolly Parton? Where's Dolly Parton? And then I see on my floor is this room with this special doorbell. And I figure, you know, the Angela Lansbury in me, I'm thinking that's probably Dolly Parton's room because she has a special intercom. All right, so one night, 3 in the morning, I'm coming in. I turn the corner. There she is. Dolly Parton, a bodyguard, and her assistant, and me. And I'm thinking, like, not saying anything, like, totally trying, <laughs> and I thought they were scared, so I took out my key, like I belonged at the hotel. Yeah, ta -ta -ta, I belong at the hotel. <laughs> They're, like, staring at me like I'm, you know, some sort of loser. We get in the elevator, and sure enough, they press seven. And all I'm thinking is, I knew it. She's on my floor. Then they stare at me going, why didn't this girl ask for a floor to be pushed? I'm going, oh, darling, I better say something. You know, I'm trying really hard not to look at her tits, because it's Sally Parton, you know. But I mean... I mean, I wasn't, it's just, a, it's a hard thing not to look at. So, I say like an idiot, oh, could you hit seven, please? And the nicest woman, Dolly Parton, well, you know what? We must be neighbors. I'm on the same floor as you. <laughs> then I go into a total dork seizure. Oh, really? I figured you were probably in the same room because I was noticing there was a special intercom doorbell thing because mine didn't have that. I figured, you know, probably like MacGyver, maybe this one thing that you had the door. <laughs> done in my life and she was even sweet like as a walk of course it had to be the same way that my room was she had to walk with me mm -hmm. of course to make this hellish experience even longer <laughs> you know and she's like being sweet oh you know that ain't nothing i just got that down at walgreens that's a special doorbell you can just hook up because when i was in the shower i couldn't hear a doorbell ring <laughs> and i'm like i love nine to five Lee Tomlin years ago <laughs> oh. 
I hope she doesn't watch this right now. I'm sorry, Tally. I was a dork in the elevator. <laughs> It's so embarrassing when that happens, you know? Oh, gosh, but it's a very funny story, and I appreciate you stopping by. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me. This is Rosie. She's on everything. Watch it all. <laughs> <laughs>